Aurelia! My friends. My toys. My sister. Did something come back to you, Aurelia? What's this about a sister? This is... An observation room. And judging by the toys, I'd say one used to specifically monitor children. Maybe we can data mine the system if the console still works. Let me try. I wonder... Why isn't there a single person? Wait a sec. It's a trap! Get ready! We got company! You think you're so strong, try to withstand this! Get out! 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 And? Look into that while you're extracting data. It's okay. It's okay. And? Get ready! I'll be right back! Anything? It's a trap after all. The building's gonna detonate after a silent countdown. So they can dispose of both the evidence and the opposition. Not bad. Their encryption's top-notch, so disarming the system will take time. The data? I retrieved it. <laughs> but there's not much time left until the detonation. The security robots must be here to ensure we don't get out in time. Charles D. Gold, this is Emerson. They're jamming our signal. I guess we'll have to leave on our own two feet. Countdown in progress. T-minus 18 minutes. Make a run for the exit. We need to get the hell out of here before we're blown sky high.
The exit is Keep running, even after we're out. Charles de Gaulle, do you read me? Loud and clear. This is the Charles de Gaulle. Transport the five of us out of here before this explosion does it for us. <laughs> right away, sir. So glad everyone's okay. On the other hand, all our leads have gone up in flames. They're burnt all black and stuff. What sort of research was going on at that facility anyway? We haven't analyzed the documents yet, so all I can do is speculate as to the building's purpose. But I assume it belonged to a group called Kronos. Kronos? That's their name. It's a long story. So let me tell it while we're en route to Sigbe.
guarding me. Deck 12, sick bay. We're with an organization called the Pan Galactic Federation and come from far away in the sky. <laughs> if we hadn't already experienced what we have with you, and say you're telling the biggest whopper ever. When you look up at the sky, you can see a lot of lights, right? Well, we're from one of those astral lights, as is Kronos, albeit a different one. To people far, far away, your home is also an astral light. And we have termed your particular orb of light Fae Creed IV. The Pan Galactic Federation and Kronos signed a charter that forbids either party from entering the other's territory or the neutral zone between them. And they broke it. We obtained information stating that Kronos was clandestinely operating on Fae Creed IV. And when we came to investigate, well, you know. I understand that you guys and Kronos are enemies, but you mind explaining what all this has to do with Relia? Little Miss Starlight was living in that laboratory of theirs. Relia is most likely a living test subject for some of Kronos' experiments. And? Sorry. That was uncalled for. A test subject? All for the sake of creating signets. This is now far beyond the realm of simply trying to reunite a young runaway girl with her parents. say sorry in this situation, Relia. You say thank you. Oh, thank you, Miki. You're very welcome. You're okay. You're here, Fiddly. Emerson and Anne are the ones who saved you. If they hadn't been around, we wouldn't have been able to do anything for you. <sighs> That's what I heard from the people here. Thank you so very much. Don't thank us. It's our fault in the first place. I have something I need to say. We want Relia to stay in our custody. What? Where'd you get that crazy idea? She's being chased by an organization called Kronos. As for who they are and how they relate to us, ask Fidel. He knows already. How does any of that matter in the least? You've seen firsthand how persistent those reprobates can be. Really is so significant to them that they're willing to go through all of this for her. And now that they've failed multiple times, they'll start taking even more drastic measures. But still... Kronos possesses nearly the same level of technology that we do. As long as they think the ends justify the means, you won't be able to stop them from taking her. We, however, can. Furthermore, your country will no longer be attacked if we have her. I want to stay here. Really, huh? Promise you'll take care of her? With all my heart. Then I leave her in your charge. Let's get you home. We are very grateful to have met the both of you. We owe you a debt of gratitude. Just wait until my technological discoveries surpass even yours. Please see that no harm comes to Relia. We will. You take care down there. All the best. Relia, you take care of yourself. Miki. Grab happiness by the horn. Fidel. Bye-bye, Relia! So long! Toodaloo! Miki! Fidel!
Aurelia. I'm very sorry, but you're not allowed to be here. Captain, our sensors have detected abnormal energy disturbances. The possibility that they're caused by mechanical activity, as opposed to a natural phenomenon, is 87.32%. What do you make of it? My guess is Chrono's cloaking technology. Use impulse engines to change our trajectory. Enable our shields as well. We're going on red alert. Engine output reduced by half. Modifying course. Now raising shields to 80% Omni. We're currently at 30%, sir. Everyone assume battle stations. Tactical display on screen. Enemy starboard. Engines to full power, raise shields to 100%. Starboard side hit. Shields operating at 97%. Loading of enemy torpedoes confirmed. And any info on the torpedoes? Uh, nothing at the moment. Change course to 90 Mark 45. We're going to their port side. Current speed at 0 0.87. We're approximately three minutes from Fake Creed 5. The enemy has launched eight torpedoes our way, all proceeding at course 360. Another eight torpedoes incoming. Following course 50, mark 270. Employing Hadian tactics, I see. Looks like someone in Kronos knows his way around a Starfleet battle. Enemy phase cannon fire has been detected. Phase cannon beam impact 135 degrees to starboard. Shields now at 94%. Oh, crap. All right, we're gonna have to let a couple of torpedoes through. I guess all we can do is pray theirs don't pack too much of a punch. Load four photon torpedoes. Set the first to slow, put it on a course for the flagship's eight torpedoes. Set the second one for slow as well and aim it at the second round of torpedoes. Prepped and ready. Great. Fire rounds one and two. Firing rounds one and two. Five seconds until contact. Three, two, one. Zero! Ten enemy torpedoes still remain. We shouldn't be anywhere near that many. Huh. Who knew their AI was that good? Five seconds until contact! Three! Two! Everyone, one. brace for impact! Damage report. We sustained damage from two torpedoes. Shields reduced to 57%. Warp drive is operational. All that damage from two measly torpedoes? Yakagi evaded all torpedoes. The Nimitz took one hit that reduced its shields to 34%. Its warp drive has sustained heavy damage. Now only its impulse engines remain operable. Even if they're top of the line, our ships are still mainly research vessels. They don't stand a snowball's chance in hell against three battle cruisers. Transmission from their flagship! Before we open communications, shut down our warp drive. Captain, you can't be serious. Do it now. Aye, aye, sir. Initiating emergency warp drive shutdown. Shields at 5%. Okay, now bring him up on screen. This is Captain Aaron of the Kronos Interstellar Army ship Dari Volos. Emerson T. Kenny, captain of the Federation vessel Charles D. Gold. Kenny, you say? Well, well, what an honor it is to meet a gentleman as influential as you. A shame I can't see your face with all that egg of defeat smeared on it. Thanks for the concern. I believe you know what we came here for. Which is yours. Captain! But in return, I'd like a favor. What's that? The warp drives of this and another of our ships took a great deal of damage. Enough to render interstellar navigation impossible. I ask you to please let us leave this sector on the one ship with a fully functional warp drive. Run a scan. The warp drives for their first and third ships are indeed down. I'll permit the other ship's crews to go. I regret to inform you, however, that yours will have to stay behind. That's fine with me, but how should we handle the exchange? Your crew will transport over to my ship, starting with you. Then we'll start moving within transport range of your vessel. Fret not, for we shall do the moving. All you need to do is lower your shields and wait until we are in range and contact you again. Don't pull anything funny in the meantime. How far away is the enemy from us? 
We are approximately 0 0.34 AU away from the Derivolos, sir. That's 10 minutes at quarter speed, or 5 at half. The crew of the Nimitz is to board the Akagi at once, using any means necessary. Yes, sir. Once everyone's boarded, the Akagi is to warp out as soon as possible and head for remote Station 5. What of the Charles D. Gold's crew? We'll use escape pods and land on Faycreed 5. Send someone later to pick us up. The Taravolos and the rest of its fleet have begun moving toward our vessel at quarter speed, Captain. 10 minutes, 47 seconds until they're within range. Open a comm link to the whole ship. Will do, sir. You're on. Attention, all crew members. You will now begin boarding the nearest escape pod and prepare to abandon ship. Do not eject, however, until I give the command. That is all. Captain, you wouldn't be... Took you long enough. You should have realized his intention when he cut power to the warp drive. This is our only option. Will you help? Everyone but Anne and Delacroix board an escape pod. Computer, bring up the self-destruct sequence settings. Access to the self-destruct sequence requires the authorization of at least three Federation officers. In addition... Nix the briefing. Emerson T. Kenny of the Pan-Galactic Federation. Rank, Captain. Authorized. Tiffin Delacroix of the Pan-Galactic Federation. Rank, Lieutenant Commander. Authorized. So let me get this straight. In addition to violating the Underdeveloped Planet Preservation Pact, we're going to add another federal offense to our rap sheets? It's our only choice. Anne Patriciani of the Pan-Galactic Federation. Rank, Lieutenant. Identities confirmed. Access to self-destruct sequence settings granted. I want a 12-minute silent countdown for a warp drive overload sequence. The sequence code is Alpha, Tango, Quebec, Zulu, 4915. Direct the blast this way. Settings applied. Command required to initiate, with another code needed to disarm. Start. Delacroix, get to an escape pod. And get little Miss Starlight to come with me. Yes, yes sir. They're all yours now. May the goddess of victory smile upon us. Deck one, cargo bay. First, synchronize the launch of the escape pods so it occurs right before we transport. Make sure one shuttle launches along with the two. I'll also need you to set the launch angle of both the pods and the shuttle to 180 degrees from the Kronos fleet. Will do. Next, have it look like we and Relia will transport to the Daravolos, but actually transport us to the shuttle. Transport us to a fast-moving object? Impossible. Have the shuttle break right before we transport, so it slows down enough to stabilize its coordinates. We should still be able to escape as long as we accelerate afterwards. Uh, that's theoretically possible, but... With your programming skills, Anne, I know you're able to turn theory into reality. You're the only one who can make this work. I'll try my best to get us through this. Somehow. You're not gonna try. You're gonna do. <sighs> if the shuttle's too fast, we'll materialize in outer space. But if we slow it down too much, we'll get caught in the blast and completely disintegrate along with the enemy ships. For the love of... Just how many miracles do we need here? None. Not a single one of these obstacles is too much for us to overcome by ourselves. Leave everything to me, kiddo. I'll keep you safe and sound. Like Fidel did? Yes, exactly like Fidel did. I'm finished. I knew you'd be done in no time. Thanks for the compliment, sir. Now, let's hurry to the transport room.
Deck two, transport room. Kenny to the Akagi. Yes? Are things coming? Done in six minutes. Do it in four or you'll be cosmic dust. I'll make sure they do, sir. I won't be able to give any further commands. So figure out the timing and warp out at your own discretion. Time to show us what you're made of and reprogram the transporter, and Have it display coordinates that are in the Daravolos, but set the real ones to inside the shuttle. I know what to do. Incoming transmission from the Darivolos. Bring it up. Have you yet to finish your preparations, Captain Kenny? Our ship is now within the established 30,000 click secure transport radius. You may begin transport now. I know, I know. Sadly, we don't have sufficient energy to do that. I request permission to engage warp drive. Fine, but don't even think of raising your shield. We won't. Your warp drive is on, and your transport coordinates are indeed correct. Now send us our test subject. We'll be right over in a mere 20 seconds. Captain Eric, we've determined that escape pods are launching from the Charles D. Goal. You what? What in the hell is going Eight, on? Seven. What are you filthy six, swine perpetrating? Five. Answer me, Kenny! What four, have you done? Three. Two, one. Please forgive me, General! Good work, Anne. Warp 1.1. Let's head to Fakrete 4. The Charles D. Goal. We made it without a single scratch, thanks to your awareness and acuity, sir. Sleep tight, old friend. Captain, just so you know, the shuttle has now officially been cloaked. Thanks for the update. Kenny to the Akagi. Do you read me? I do. Loud and clear. Whew. I'm glad you guys are okay. Our sentiments exactly, Captain. I'm also pleased to report we're safely on our way to Remote Station 5. That's great news. We lack adequate power for subspace transmission, and we're about to lose our signal. But let me say one thing first. We've already filed a request with the aforementioned base to mobilize a rescue squad. They're scheduled to arrive in a few days. While you're at it, put in a request for you know what. You don't mean the Model G, do you? That's ludicrous. They'll never approve that. It hasn't undergone a single test flight. Make the request. Uh, I suppose it can't hurt to ask. Oh, and there's something of the utmost import I need to discuss. We lost them. I don't understand why you wouldn't say the most important thing first if you were about to go out of range. I think he would have if you hadn't made that demand. Well, there's no use thinking about what might have been. 
We should probably lay low somewhere until the rescue team from Remote Station 5 comes. Yes, sir. Huh? Oh, no. Really? Uh... It can't be. She's transporting. How could I be so careless as to overlook the transport tracker? What an elementary mistake. One of the three ships apparently got their shields up in time, I see. Unlike the Darivolos, the other two ships might have already had them up in case of an emergency. Even if we weren't on the bridge, I should have looked over the data more thoroughly. <sighs> Still, they should have sustained a decent amount of damage from the Overload. I doubt they'll be able to warp out of this sector anytime soon. Maybe so, but we can't do anything without our own ship. You say those gleaming sticks came from this so-called Kronos. I find this quite difficult to believe. I saw it with my own two eyes. How's the front line? The troops with the gleaming sticks supposedly vanished right after weeding. Once the Trikurans were deprived of their secret weapon, they were no longer a match for our military strength. So you held them off? We did. And now a plan is in motion to invade Eastern Trekur. If it goes well, they will be forced to retreat from our border. Speaking of Eastern Traker, I was just about to head there. <laughs> Allow me to take part in the invasion with you. Take part? I assume they would want me to come along as a reinforcement anyway. Rasuli is our homeland, and Fiori is a good friend. So I have more than enough reasons to fight too. Very well then. I doubt anyone will oppose the addition of reserves. I'll let my superiors know. Thank you. The faster we can join everyone, the better. Therefore, let's make for Eastern Trekur post-haste. I'll give you the details on the way. Our strategy for this battle requires us to split our army in two. Master Camus will command the main force, which will charge head-on at the enemy, overwhelming them with numbers and distracting them. <laughs> I figured as much. Our detachment will infiltrate the Kingdom of Trekur by passing through the Western Dakov Tunnel. This will put us on the other side of the Imperial troops in Eastern Trekur, allowing us to attack from behind. Kay. Kay. To reach the tunnel, we must venture beyond Sword of View until we come to a fork in the road. Then we head southwest. Mobility will be of the utmost importance in arriving at our objective. Therefore, we will move in small units. We are to rendezvous with the other detachment members at Eastern Trekur. I would rather not be the last ones there, so let us make haste. Sounds like a plan.
pardon me. Close to perfect as it gets. Once we're beyond Sword of You, we should head southwest to find the Western Dakov Tunnel. Sorry!
I still have a lot more to learn. Close to perfect as it gets.
withstand this! Never strike! Serial threat! Nourishes the warrior. We should head northeast. That way, we'll arrive at the far end of Eastern Trekur, and we can rendezvous with the other members of the detachment. <laughs> 